This enhanced version of Skoda's third generation Fabia has been usefully improved as part of the brand's efforts to keep up with front running designs in the Super Mini segment. There's smarter looks and sharp pricing, plus this Czech contender gives nothing away to its rivals in terms of safety and media connectivity. It may no longer actively campaign as a budget buy, but Skoda's Fabia has always been the thinking person's value-focused super mini. Around 4.2 million examples of this model have been sold since its original launch at the turn of the century, and it's always aimed to give its customers more for their money, as does the third-generation version in the much-improved form that we're going to look at here. The Fabia was the car that brought credibility to Skoda. This model's favorite 90s predecessor had been the first design that Brandon produced under Volkswagen Group ownership, but it was the first 6Y series Mark I Fabia that showed us just what this could mean. It redefined just how large a Super Mini could be with a spacious interior, pretty much as big inside as some older family hatchbacks from the next class up. Every small car maker had to match it and Super Minis quickly became so big that the market rather hurriedly created a smaller city car segment below them. The Fabia had proved to be a very significant car. The second generation 5J series design of 2007 added a bit of extra style to the Fabia recipe and it even spawned a successful world rally car. And the original version of the car we're testing here, the NJ series third generation model of 2014, re-emphasized the traditional Fabia value proposition. Like its predecessors, it was available from the start in both hatch and estate forms. And also like its predecessors, it claimed to be one of the most spacious super minis in the segment and it was at launch. Since then though, uh, this model has been somewhat overtaken in that regard by several class rivals, amongst them all new versions of its Volkswagen Group cousins, the Volkswagen Polo and the Seat Ibiza, both of which use a much newer MQB A0 platform that this generation Fabia can't have. So what can it offer to deal not only with tougher segment competition, but also a fresh wave of super mini based SUVs? Well, the midterm facelift package we're going to analyze here tries to answer that question. The strong value proposition that we've already alluded to looks even better when you take account of this car's much improved standard equipment levels, which now include front assist autonomous braking and a smart six and a half inch infotainment touchscreen across the range, along with the useful package of Skoda's famous Simply Clever features which add day-to-day -day usability. There's also smarter styling and efficiency improvements across an engine lineup which is now exclusively devoted to one litre three-cylinder petrol power. If you think this all sounds quite promising then join us as we check this car out with the industry's most comprehensive film review. What's the point of offering a small car with anything other than one litre, three cylinder petrol power? Well, Skoda clearly couldn't see any because that's all that's on offer in this improved Mark III Fabia, uh, which is fine by us. With the original version of this third generation model, diesel units accounted for a miserly 6% of sales, so they clearly weren't worth continuing with. And anyway, Skoda can now give buyers a more relevant option beneath the bonnet of this car. Since this NJ series Fabia design was originally launched, Launched in 2014, the Czech brand has been given access to the Volkswagen Group's excellent turbocharged 1 litre TSI unit, as well as the normally aspirated MPI version of the engine that was used in the smaller CityGo model. It's that turbo TSI power plant that we're trying here in its top 110 PS form, a state of tune that entitles you to the option of the Wolfsburg Group's uh, latest seven speed DSG twin clutch automatic gearbox, which features on this test car. Now this self shifter has little effect on performance and it actually improves uh, economy and emissions slightly. So it'll probably be a welcome extra for the mainly older customers that are likely to want it. 
Other Fabia folk will doubtless be quite happy with the reasonably crisp shifting manual box, which has five speeds with most models, but adds a sixth ratio if you go for this top 110 PS engine. If you're quick with it, uh, 62 miles an hour from rest occupies 9.6 seconds on the way to 121 miles an hour, surely as fast as you'd ever want to go in this type of car. We reckon the sweet spot in the range though is occupied by the lesser 95 PS version of this turbo TSI engine. Uh, the performance doesn't feel much different to the perkier unit, uh, 62 miles an hour from rest occupies 10.8 seconds on the way to 114 miles an hour and price wise it's available at a much more accessible point in the range. Both TSI power plants have plenty of low rev pulling power, although uh, the tall efficiency orientated gearing means you don't really need it. In fact, so long legged is the box that sometimes you have to remember to change up to fourth at highway speeds. Of course, you don't get the kind of torque that the old 1.4 litre TDI diesel used to provide and buyers of the estate model might especially notice the fact that today no model in the range can tow more than 590 kilos. As mentioned at the beginning, your other option as a Fabia buyer is one litre power with MPI normal aspiration. Uh, Skoda's dropped the arthritic 60 PS version of this older tech unit for our market, uh, limiting base variants of this car to that engine its supposedly livelier 75 PS state of tune. Uh, to be frank though, we'd avoid it unless you really are cash strapped in buying this car, uh, given that the price saving over the TSI power plant is relatively slight. Uh, ignore that advice and you'll get yourself a Fabia that takes a yawning 14.9 seconds to reach 62 and thrashes its way to 104 miles an hour flat out. But more significantly, it's one that will have around 60% less pulling power through the gears than an equivalent TSI variant could offer. Now that means that unless you habitually drive like Miss Marple in a Fabia MPI, you're going to have to rev the engine a lot more to make meaningful progress, which apart from creating the kind of dreadful din that will spoil your enjoyment of the archers, will in turn mean that you'll probably end up using more fuel than you would be in the Perkia Turbo variant. As you'll also learn elsewhere in this film, uh, this car can't boast the sophisticated MQB A0 platform that underpins this model's um, Volkswagen Polo, Seat Ibiza and Audi A1 Sportback VW Group Super Mini Cousins. Having recently tried all these cars, we were keen to see whether this Fabia's more elderly PQ26 platform could still hold its own in that company. Now, mostly it can. Appropriately, Skoda's given this model a comfort-based setup that uh, deals quite well with general tarmac tears and much of the time feels supple and forgiving. It also equips this car to be one of the relatively few super minis you could really feel confident about attempting a longer journey in. That is provided of course you don't make the awful mistake of paying extra for unyielding sport suspension on this top Monte Carlo spec version. The difference comes though when you're called upon to deal with abrupt potholes or speed humps or to make a sudden direction change. Now in all three of these scenarios you'd probably think the Fabia to be fine unless you'd recently driven a new Ibiza, a new Polo or perhaps another more modern entrant in this category, say uh, Ford's current Fiesta, at which point you'd realise that the game slightly moved on. Of course the next generation version of this car will be built on the stiffer MQB A0 chassis and would expect that to help temper the degree of lateral body roll that uh, the tall body and the slightly softer damping setup encourages if you try to take tighter bends at any kind of rapid speed. A typical Fabia buyer probably shouldn't be bothered by any of this and anyway this Czech contender has plenty of compensatory attributes in its armoury. Uh, refinement on a TSI variant is good for a small car of this kind and the Fabia impresses when it comes to low speed manoeuvrability. It's light steering, it's tight turning circle and it's great all round visibility uh, makes town travel easy. As you might expect at higher speeds uh, the helm isn't exactly full of feedback but it's reasonably communicative 
and you always know what the front tyres are doing. Uh, there is an XDS Plus electronic differential system to aid corner turning, but there's no particular incentive to ever drive this car on its door handles. Still, if that is your preference, then you probably wouldn't be looking at a fibre in the first place. The bottom line is, though, that uh, although driving excitement may be in relatively short supply, there's still a real maturity to the way this car drives. Uh, if you're thinking of downsizing, then you might well like it a lot. In its original form, this third generation Fabia aimed to usher in a fresh era in Skoda design. Previous Fabia hatch and estate models had served as an entry point to the Checkmakers model lineup, but this NJ series Mark III version had the little City Go City car beneath it and could therefore be a bit more expressive in its styling. So instead of the high and narrow demeanor of the previous 5J series car, this one got a wider, flatter look that borrowed from the powerful proportions of the Fabia RS Racer, which was made in the second generation model's lifetime. Stylist Josef Kaban, a Slovakian who studied at the Royal College of Art in London, says that the sharp angles and the bold edging were inspired by the brand's popular Monte Carlo model of the 30s. It's a look that's been smartly updated by Karl Neuheld, the brand's current head of design for this facelifted model. This smarter front end is distinguished by a crisply contoured bonnet, which flows down into a wider grille with vertical slats framed either in chrome or as in this case in black. Uh, it's flanked by headlamps that now feature more intricate detailing, apparently a visual tribute to the Czech Republic's cut crystal glass heritage. Uh, these lights can now be ordered with optional full LED beams and LED daytime running lights are now standard fit across the range. Uh, not much has changed in profile, whereas before the flanks are emphasised by this sharp mid-level so-called tornado line. Now that crease is even longer on the estate model, which is 265 millimetres lengthier than this five-door hatch. Uh, the angular shaping that's been worked into the flanks avoids the slab-sided look that that kind of approach can often deliver. And there are some nice touches, like the trailing edge of the rear door and these kicked-up uh, rear quarter-light windows. There are, of course, fresh alloy wheel styles for this facelifted model. Uh, the rims start at 15 inches in size and they now range right up to 18 inches. We've got the 16 inch black Italia design here. Uh, a contrast coloured roof is a popular option amongst Fabia buyers. Top Monte Carlo variants like this one uh, get it in black while the colour edition variants can also have it in white or silver with matching mirror caps. Move to the rear and you'll find a more smoothly sculpted bumper than the original version of this Mark III model had, which as before incorporates integrated reflectors. Uh, further up, it's as you were, unless you happen to have paid extra for LED tail lamps. That's a freshly added option that further emphasizes the usual Skoda C-shaped nighttime illuminating signature. This Monte Carlo variant gets those as standard. Of course, what's of more importance is the stuff that you can't see. Now, this NJC series Fabia model doesn't get the stiff and sophisticated MQB A0 platform which underpins the latest versions of its Seat Ibiza and Volkswagen Polo VW Group cousins but it soldiers on instead with the older PQ26 chassis that's been used by this Skoda ever since it entered production in 2014. Let's take a seat up front. Now you probably weren't expecting anything quite as nice as this, and to be fair, you won't get it with the kind of volume trimmed variant that most buyers will probably choose. This top Monte Carlo version lifts the otherwise rather drab ambiance with red upholstery trimming, carbon leather seat bolsters, and a sports steering wheel. It's the kind of stuff a more sensibly orientated Fabia buyer might quite understandably rather question the need for in a one litre, three cylinder, value priced small runabout of this kind. Uh, that is the sort of person who might appreciate the small but useful interior changes that Skoda's made as part of this mid-term update. Uh, there's brush effect dashboard trim and contrast stitching on the door armrests. The straightforward models get better quality seat fabrics. Uh, you can now specify a centre front arm armrest and top variants like this one now get illumination for the centre console compartment so that you can more easily find things like house keys in the dark. 
Uh, the key change though lies here in the centre of the dashboard with an upgraded level of entertainment. Uh, the previous 5 inch screen is now replaced by this smarter glass fronted 6.5 inch monitor and that's fitted as standard across the range. You even get it on the hair shirt entry level S variants, although rather unforgivably in this day and age those versions still don't get a DAB radio. But almost all Fabia buyers ignore S-Spec anyway and therefore they can be assured of what the brand calls its Swing Plus package which gives you the brand's SmartLink Plus technology, which allows Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, and also the use of smartphone apps on the infotainment system's display. If you specify your Fabio with the optional higher grade Amundsen package that we have here, which includes navigation and Wi-Fi, uh, then you can really get into the advanced connectivity that Skoda these days offers through its optional infotainment online package. Now this gives you online traffic information and it can update you on things like fuel prices, parking spaces, current news and weather. Uh, the Amundsen system can also be programmed to work with a freely downloadable Skoda Media Command app, which allows a couple of tablets or smartphones to be Wi-Fi connected into the entertainment screen so that, for example, the volume can be adjusted from the back of the car or maybe you could get your teenage kids to set a navigation destination for you. Uh, the app even has a parental control function that allows you to oversee what your children are watching in the rear. All of this will be really useful if you've ticked the box for the Simply Clever package, which includes a tablet holder that clips onto the back of the front seat headrest. Uh, that's just one of the Simply Clever features that really might sell you this car. I mean, what other Super Mini offers you an umbrella beneath the front passenger seat or the opportunity to incorporate a waste bin into the door bins? Uh, you might also really appreciate the designer's more general efforts at innovative cabin storage, things like the overhead compartment for your sunglasses and this useful parking ticket clip on the inside of the right hand a pillar someone's thought that through other more familiar storage features include a decently sized glove box and properly large door pockets that can take a 1.5 litre bottle and which are designed to take the dedicated high visibility vests that European motoring law now requires. Uh, there's also an armrest storage box and the usual couple of cup holders and a stowage area at the base of the centre stack. It feels pretty spacious in here for a small car and it's easy to find an ideal driving position. Uh, the gear lever is within easy reach. The pedals line up nicely with the reach and rake adjustable steering wheel. And on most models, you get a height adjustable seat too. Uh, that seat's quite comfortable in terms of lower back support, but it's a pity that you can't kit it out with lumbar adjustment. Uh, through the three spoke steering wheel, you view a clear black on white instrument binnacle, uh, which has been revised for extra clarity as part of this midterm update. In between the two main dials is a display screen with selectable vehicle, driving data, drive assist, navigation, audio and telephone options. Visibility out of the front is fine thanks to the narrow A pillars and it's a similar story when you're looking over your shoulder courtesy of the tall windows and the slim rear pillars. Just in case though, rear parking sensors are standard providing you avoid entry level trim. As usual, in terms of overall finish, Skoda's designers are somewhat hobbled by the Volkswagen Group's need for them to create something slightly less plush than you'd find in a more expensive Polo. But within the restrictions of that approach, they've done reasonably well. OK, so you can forget chrome trim and soft touch plastics, but as a super mini buyer, you might well quite justifiably conclude you don't need that kind of thing anyway. What's more important is that the fabrics, the dash trim and the functionality of the switch gear all fit feels like it's going to last. And as far as we can see, it's been well screwed together by the Czech Mlada Boleslav factory too. <clears throat> Okay, let's take a seat in the rear. Now the doors open wide and thanks to this car's relatively tall roof line, it's not necessary to stoop a little on the way in as is necessary in some rivals. Uh, that'll also make it easier for parents to reach in, to strap down child seats or to deal with unruly youngsters. 
And once inside, well, the lack of that more modern MQB A0 Volkswagen Group platform tells a little here. Equipped with it, rivals say to Beetha and Volkswagen Polo models are able to offer a little more legroom. Uh, the Fabia still doesn't do badly by Super Mini class standards, mind you. Headroom is still embedded in the class. And in terms of footwell space, well, it's just about possible for one six foot adult to sit behind another. Although in such a situation, the rear person's knees would be rather buried in the front seat backs. That'd be even more the case if your Fabia is kitted out with the thick sports seats of this top Monte Carlo version. What else? Uh, well, as in any Super Mini, if you were to fit three adults back here, they'd need to be on pretty familiar terms. But the extra width of this third generation design helps in that regard. Uh, you're certainly better off here than you would be in, say, a rival Fiesta. Uh, there are a few practical touches too, including a center storage tray, seat back pockets, and door storage bins that can hold a half litre bottle. And in a Monte Carlo variant like this one, you can get a couple of useful USB ports back here too. So let's uh, finish by heading back to the tailgate, but Paul's on the way to notice another of Skoda's trumpeted so-called simply clever touches. Uh, this one is an ice scraper built into the fuel filler cap. Now it's been improved here to also incorporate a tire tread depth indicator. Uh, time to check out the cargo area. Now here you'll find the main reason why so many buyers would choose a Fabia rather than Skoda's smaller Citigo model, which comes with a boot nearly 50% smaller. Once you've negotiated a fairly high loading lip, you'll find 330 litres of luggage space back here. Again, because of the restrictions of the elderly PQ26 platform, that's about 20 litres less room than you get in a Polo or an Ibiza, but it's still a very class competitive figure and it's pretty much the same as you get from a Ford focus and the next segment up. Uh, for reference, a Fiesta would give you 292 litres. To help make good use of the room on offer, there are various load securing nets offered as part of the optional Simply Clever practicality package. Uh, plus you can have a two position luggage compartment shelf, which will keep uh, fragile items off the boot floor. Um, on the right here, there's a bag hook and an elasticated strap. On the left, you get a deep compartment and a tray too for smaller items. Uh, you can also have a reversible boot liner mat that can be flipped over if you have muddy boots or muddy dog to carry. Another option that we want is the Space Saver spare wheel that we have here, but do bear in mind that that will decrease carriage capacity by 25 litres. Pushing forward the 60-40 split folding rear backrest could be easier. The retraction buttons are located next to the headrests and getting to them might be tricky if your arms are loaded down with shopping bags. Uh, fortunately though the backrests are light and they're sufficiently sprung so pushing them forward isn't too difficult. Um, now once you've done that 1,150 litres of space will be freed up with this car in standard form although the floor area unfortunately isn't quite flat. If you need even more space, then sign up for the estate version. It's a small estate that uh, just isn't, well, small. Uh, the spacious boot offers a 530 litre capacity, and that's pretty much the same as you get from a Vauxhall Astra Sports Tourer estate in the next class up. Uh, fold forward the rear bench there, and 1,502 litres of fresh air is opened up, and that's in a load bay that can take items up to 1.55 metres long across a loading floor that's 960 mils wide. Estate buyers also get get the option of a neat mid-level floor uh, which raises the floor of the boot um, up level with the sill and provides a discrete storage space. A plus, the station wagon variant now has a removable LED torch in the boot which is charged automatically while the car is driving. Uh, that torch is fitted with magnets so it can be attached to the car body if the driver's unlucky enough to have to change the wheel at night. It's all been really well thought through. Fabia pricing sits in the 13 to 19,000 pound bracket, which is common to most mainstream models in the super mini segment. Uh, so while it's decent value, it's no longer a bargain basement choice. Still, that should be enough for the moment anyway to maintain its position as Skoda's second best selling model after the Octavia and to keep the interest of the private buyers who make up over 65% of sales. As ever with this car, you get a body style choice between this five door hatch, which is what 78% of Fabia customers in our market buy, or for a premium of just over a thousand pounds, there's the option of uh, smartly styled estate. 
Uh, within the Fabia range, the choices you have to make aren't too difficult. The engine lineup, for example, is now pretty simple. All variants these days featuring three cylinder, one litre petrol power. Uh, things kick off with a base 75 PS, normally aspirated MPI unit, which with entry level trim could be yours on a finance agreement for around £150 a month with a £1,000 deposit. That tends to be the way that people buy cars these days, and it represents a pretty good deal for a car of this quality. We'd suggest though that it's uh, really worth stretching just a little bit further and finding the extra that Skoda asks for the far more responsive 95 PS TSI turbocharged power plant. Uh, the increment in the total upfront asking fee is £730. Uh, now this TSI unit also comes in the uprated 110 PS guys we're trying here, in which form it can be mated with DSG automatic transmission for an extra £1,000. Trim-wise, there are five options. We'd certainly suggest you find the small premium Skoda Ask to progress from entry-level S-Spec to the plusher SE level. Uh, beyond that, well, it's obviously up to you. Color edition spec will make this Skoda stand out. SEL trim adds extra luxury. And top Monte Carlo variants like this one deliver a sportier touch. Now we'll get into the detail of what each level offers in a moment, but first, let's check out the value proposition that this Fabia's overall pricing strategy represents against obvious super mini sector rivals. First, let's consider how this Czech contenders proposition stacks up against the two super mini market leaders, Ford's Fiesta and Vauxhall's Corsa. Well, pretty well is the answer. A base petrol 70 PS five door Fiesta costs over 1500 pounds more, while the one litre EcoBoost Fiesta variant you'd need to rival a Fabia TSI 95 PS model costs over two and a half thousand pounds more. Uh, the Vauxhall is priced more comparably to this Skoda, but it offers inefficient old tech 1.4 litre petrol power and that'll be much less economical and both those rivals will offer you less space on the back seat and in the boot. Look away from the obvious alternative super mini choices and the Fabia puts up an equally strong showing. Uh, let's start with its Volkswagen Group super mini cousins, uh, cars that share the same engine wear but have more modern underpinnings. Now say it's a Beetha, can't be had from around £13,000 like this Fabia. Prices for that Iberian model start from just over £15,000 but that's only because Seat doesn't offer the hair shirt base S trim level that Skoda does. Uh, compare the SE variants of both models and you'll find them very similarly priced. Uh, predictably though a Volkswagen Polo is significantly more expensive than a Fabia. Uh, it typically demands between £1,500 and £2,500 more from you uh, depending on the engine you're looking at. What about other super mini options that you could consider? Well, value orientated Fabia buyers will probably also be looking at brands like Citroen, Suzuki, Renault, Kia and Hyundai in this segment. Base versions of the Citroen C3 and the Suzuki Swift can undercut this Skoda by up to a thousand pounds, but they can't match this Fabia's build quality or the size of its boot. Uh, the same applies to a Renault Clio, which typically would cost you a few hundred pounds more than an equivalent Fabia. A Kia Rio can undercut this Skoda in its base form, but once you get up to the turbocharged petrol engines a lot of buyers will want, it's significantly more expensive. And now the same applies to the Hyundai 20. What else? Well, the Mazda 2 is similarly priced, but unfortunately it has a very small boot. Uh, the Nissan Micra and the Toyota Yaris are both similarly priced to this Skoda in base petrol form, but they're much pricier if, as we would, you want performance to rival this Fabia's turbo TSI engine. Uh, we like the Honda Jazz, but it's getting on for a thousand pounds more than a Fabia, and it isn't as well equipped or as economical as this Skoda. Uh, you would save money by choosing a Mitsubishi Mirage Duro and even more by opting for an MG3, but both of those are elderly designs with older tech, less economical engines. If having considered all that, you conclude it is a Fabia that you really want, then you're gonna to need to know just how generous Skoda's been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Now, even entry-level S models get body colored door mirrors that are powered and heated, a height adjustable driver's seat, and a stop-start engine system. Plus, there are simply clever features like an eye scraper that's built into the fuel filler cap. There's also a 6.5-inch swing spec color infotainment touchscreen 
uh, from which you can control a four speaker radio, activate USB and SD card compatibility and get a Bluetooth connection for your phone. It does lack a DAB tuner though, which is, well, disappointing on any car in this day and age. Uh, most buyers, though, will want to find the small extra premium necessary to get themselves into an SE variant that will come much better equipped. Additional features at this level include 15-inch alloy wheels, front fog lamps, an alarm, air conditioning, uh, rear parking sensors, a trip computer, a leather-covered multifunction steering wheel, height-adjustable front seats, an umbrella under the front passenger seat, and a speed limiter to help preserve your license in roadworks or urban areas. You also get a better quality Swing Plus Spec 6 speaker stereo that does have DAB and which features Skoda's SmartLink Plus package that allows Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. As we said earlier, your other trim options in the range lie with a personalised look, the colour edition models, extra luxury, the SEL variants and a sporty package, this Monte Carlo trim level. All offer larger 16-inch wheels in different styles. In each case, the trim level in question adds to the items we've covered in SE spec with a carefully chosen package of extras. A colour edition Fabia gives you a contrast coloured roof and door mirrors in either black, white or silver with the wheels painted to match, uh, plus you get cruise control control or you could go for an SEL spec model which also has cruise control plus part suede upholstery, climate control, an auto dimming rear view mirror and an upgraded Amundsen infotainment system with navigation. And finally this Monte Carlo spec comes with part leather upholstery, a red stitch sport steering wheel, climate control, privacy glass, LED rear lights, special badge work and on the hatch version a black roof. Many of the extra features we've listed on upper spec trim levels are available as options, so don't automatically move up a grade until you've checked those out. For instance, you can add alloy wheels, air conditioning and rear parking sensors to a base S model. Elsewhere in the range, if you haven't gone for a Monte Carlo spec model, you might want to add rear privacy glass, LED rear lamps or rear electric windows. If you haven't stretched up to plush SEL spec, you might want to add in auto headlamps or include keyless entry. Now we'd recommend that Fabia buyers think carefully about upgrading the infotainment system too. The Amundsen setup delivering just about everything you need for this is, as we said earlier, only standard with plush SEL trim but it's a relatively affordable option elsewhere in the range and it's well worth having. It gets you navigation and in-car Wi-Fi plus a year's use of an infotainment online package and that gives you online traffic information and it can update you on things like fuel prices, parking spaces, current news and weather. What else? Well, another key new option added into this third generation Fabia range is that for full LED headlights, which adapt themselves to the road and other traffic and need never be dipped. If you can't quite stretch to that, then the front fog lights can be equipped with the cornering function so that they turn with the bends. A panoramic glass roof can be specified on most models and with the estate body style, it can come with black or silver roof rails. And on SEL and Monte Carlo variants, you can add in stiffer sports suspension too, but unless you happen to have your chiropractor on permanent speed dial, we'd advise against that. Automatic wipers are optional, and with the two TSI engines, you can have adaptive cruise control, which works on the highway to automatically adapt your speed to other vehicles. And all round parking sensors and a rear view camera can be had if you think you'll need help parking your Fabia. What about practicalities? Well, you're going to need to add a spare wheel unless in the event of a puncture, you're happy to be stuck with the repair kit, which is all Skoda provides as standard. A full size spare is available on the cheaper models and a space saver spare is available further up the range. There are optional roof bars, which you'll need if you're gonna specify the lockable bicycle holder and a roof box can be fitted to them too. Uh, you may well want the optional removable tow bar, particularly if you've gone for the estate body style. Um, here, we've gone for the optional winter package that gives you heated windscreen washer nozzles and heated front seats. 
And beyond that, well, most Fabia buyers tick the box for the simply clever package that gives you netting and a storage compartment in the boot, a waste bin in the door panel, and a holder for multimedia devices, which clips onto the back of the front headrest and can hold a tablet. Uh, you can add a cigarette lighter to this too if you haven't kicked the habit. A third rear headrest is available and on base models, you might want to add in a front center armrest and a textile floor mat set. Now that latter feature is included as part of an optional protection pack, which also gives you a rubber boot mat and mud flaps. On the subject of the cargo area, you can add in a plastic boot dish with an aluminum partitioning strip. Uh, with your state, a partition net can be fitted to separate off the luggage space from the passenger compartment. If you have pets, then you might want the rear seat protector and the dog harness too. Onto aesthetics, budget for the fact that you're almost certainly going to have to pay off Skoda Dealer more for your choice of exterior colour. The only standard one is solid energy blue. Other than that, there are various exclusive metallic and pearl effect colour options and some special shades are available for the colour concept and Monte Carlo variants. We've got one of them here, Meteor Grey. If you like the coloured roof and wing mirror package of that colour concept trim level, you can specify that at extra cost on SE or SEL variants. And and if you've avoided entry level trim, you can upgrade to various larger alloy wheel sizes too to be able to go for the biggest 18 inch rims. You have to have Monte Carlo trim. Inside, it's possible on SE and SEL variants to add in various decorative trim inserts. For mainstream variants, you might want to add in a sports steering wheel. And on this Monte Carlo variant, you can optionally have the center console finished in either black or cherry red. Enough with options, let's talk about safety. Now a key change with this revised model is the addition as standard on every model of the Volkswagen Group's effective front assist system. Now this setup scans the road ahead as you drive for potential collision hazards and incorporates a city emergency brake feature that deals with the specific requirements of urban speeds of up to 21 miles an hour. If the radar detects something you might be likely to hit, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or you aren't able to, then and the brakes will automatically be activated to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, the system also includes a pedestrian monitor which specifically searches for pedestrians who might be about to step out in front of you. Now another standard safety feature that we really like is the award-winning automatic post-collision braking system which automatically brakes the car down to six miles an hour after a collision. So if say someone hits you and understandably you go to pieces then the car will automatically automatically sort itself out. Uh, these features are all in addition to all the normal safety kit that you these days expect on any modern family car. So every version of this Skoda has twin front side and curtain airbags, as well as the usual traction and stability control systems. These of course include ABS brakes, which as usual feature brake assist to help in emergency stops. And those will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard flashes. There's also a tire pressure monitor and a pair of ice fix charge seat mounts for the rear seat. Unfortunately, hill hold control to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions costs extra. If you want to go further, then various safety options beckon, all of which require you to have avoided entry level trim. And now we'd recommend the Care Connect package, which will allow you to monitor your car from your smartphone. Plus, that setup includes a breakdown call function and it will automatically alert the emergency services if the airbags go off in an accident. Uh, you can also add in a driver fatigue assistant, which will monitor driving reactions for drowsiness and prompt you to stop for one of those restorative coffees if lethargy is detected. Also optional is a blind spot detection feature which alerts you if you're about to pull out into the path of another vehicle. Packaged up with that last feature is a rear traffic alert signal that warns you if other vehicles are approaching when you're reversing out of a space.
This NJ series third generation Fabia model may be one of the older Super Mini designs in the segment, but you really wouldn't know that from a brief perusal of this car's fuel and CO2 readings, which are extremely competitive. Uh, there's no diesel engine these days to produce the really eye-catching stats that uh, the earlier TDI versions of this Mark III design could deliver, over 80 miles per gallon and under 90 grams per kilometer of CO2. But even that didn't impress enough people for black pump fuel versions of this car to really catch on. So these days, as you might have heard earlier on this film, as a five year buyer, you're limited to three cylinder, one litre petrol power. With this facelifted Mark III model range, all the 999cc units on offer have been tinkered with. Uh, the headline updates centre around the upgraded engine management systems and the installation of a second catalytic converter. Drilling down a bit more into the detail, the MPI engine gets revised fuel injection nozzles that ensure more effective fuel atomization, plus changes have been made to the power plant's oxygen sensor for a better fuel air ratio. Uh, the TSI variants also also gain petrol particulate filters, a revised exhaust system and a slight redesign for the turbocharger and the oil and cooling systems. Uh, the TSI power plant has been made more heat resistant and the engine sensors for the management and diagnosis of the particulate matter filtration system have been improved. Now in theory, from a frugality and cleanliness point of view, your optimum choice in the lineup is the entry level normally aspirated 75 PS MPI power plant. The official figures for this unit are quoted at 57.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 111 grams per kilometre of CO2. However, as we have already observed in the driving experience section, the fact that the MPI unit has such a meagre amount of pulling power means you'll be thrashing it about quite a lot whenever a reasonably rapid progress is called for, which of course won't do a great deal for fuel consumption, which is why that we think a better real-world choice from an efficiency point of view would be the turbocharged T PSI 1 litre engine that we're trying here. In the 95 PS guys that we'd recommend, a Fabia TSI can return 51.4 mpg on the combined cycle and 106 grams per kilometre of CO2. The slightly perkier 110 PS variant is almost as cost effective, uh, managing 50.4 mpg and 107 grams per kilometre, or 53.3 mpg and 106 grams per kilometre if, as here, you choose to mate that power plant with the optional 7 speed DSG auto gearbox. Skoda has achieved this standard of efficiency by including all the usual efficiency tools which are at the disposal of modern automakers, uh, things like brake energy regeneration and a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. Uh, if you specify the upgraded Amundsen multimedia screen we've been trying here, you get a selectable green score screen that scores your success or otherwise in motoring frugality. As a buyer, we'd recommend that you uh, consider downloading the clever My Skoda app which includes a feature that can show you just how efficient your driving has been on any given trip. One argument that you could advance for choosing the base MPI normally aspirated engine would relate to the fact that it attracts much lower insurance premiums. I um, mean, you're looking at uh, Group 2E or 3E as opposed to somewhere between Groups 80 and 9E for the 95 PS TSI variant. Uh, this 110 PS version is rated between Groups 11E and 12E. Uh, you might also want to know that the brand offers what it calls insurance. That's a free accident and repair program that covers you for three years. And the warranty, well it's certainly true that other rivals better the three year 60,000 mile warranty that Skoda provides. Uh, you can extend your cover to four or five years by paying extra though. Uh, not that you really need to, uh, the brand regularly tops independent customer satisfaction surveys according to real people. There are a few more satisfying cars to own. Residual values are pretty strong by class standards. Independent experts reckon that the one litre TSI 95 PS variant we've been recommending should retain 35% of its original value after three years and 60,000 miles of use. Um, that's if you select mainstream SE trim. Uh, the figure will fall slightly if you choose a plusher variant. You might want to note that the DSG Auto versions of the 110 PS TSI variant um, tend to retain a couple of percent less than their manual equivalents. As for 
servicing, well as usual with Volkswagen Group products, there's a choice between adopting either a fixed or a flexible regime here. Uh, the fixed approach is based around servicing the car every 10,000 miles or every year, whichever comes first, and that's recommended if the car will be driven for less than 10,000 miles a year and mainly over shorter distances. The flexible servicing approach is for owners who tend to drive their cars over longer distances. Now here, sensors and the engine detect when a service is needed. A service light will show between 9 and 24,000 miles or after 24 months, whichever comes first. At point of purchase, there's the option of uh, buying a fixed price, three year or 30,000 mile service plan. So, how to sum up? Does it matter that the Fabia isn't the newest kid on the block when it comes to the super many choices you could make? Probably not. We can't imagine the average buyer really cares what platform their small car rides on. Although this Skoda's more elderly underpinnings are slightly betrayed by ride quality on poorer surfaces and the fact that its Volkswagen Group cousins can offer more boot space. If you can live with that, then gratefully accept the price saving Skoda gives you in compensation and enjoy the rest of what this Czech contender has to offer. It's still one of the more spacious cars in the class that you could choose, particularly in the estate guise, which arguably has a more unique selling points than this hatch body style. Either way, you'll get a car that's better built than most rivals and we applaud the brand's decision to standardize its front assist autonomous braking system across the range. If you want them, there are even a few fashionable frills further up the range to impress the neighbours a bit. These days, after all, it's quite likely that your neighbours would be impressed by a Skoda. It's unlikely to bother many Fabia buyers that the engine range is now solely based around one litre, three cylinder petrol power. Uh, that's the option almost all of them would have selected anyway. And we reckon the turbo TSI version of that unit is arguably the best and most responsive engine of that configuration you can buy. It's surely one of the cleanest and most economical power plants of its kind. True, there are certainly more stylish and sharper handling cars you could choose in this class, but most of them will cost you quite a lot more. If instead you focus on the things that you're actually going to most need in a super mini of this kind, ease of use, low running costs, practicality, it becomes clear that the Fabia still emphatically ticks a lot of those boxes. It's still a car in this class that you can't ignore. It may not be the small runabout you'd ideally dreamed of owning, but it could very well be the one you actually need. <laughs>